early in 1973, not even a year after the discovery of the appropriate tools we talked about, Stanley Cohen, along with a bunch of other researchers, carried out the first experiment in gene technology. Researchers chose a small plasmid named after Cohen's initials, PSC101, which occurs naturally in large quantities in bacterial cells. This plasmid carries the TC gene that confers resistance to antibiotic tetracycline. The plasmid was mainly chosen because it contains just one GAATTC base sequence, which we have already seen is the restriction site for the restriction endonuclease ECOR1, which cleaves between the G and A bases within this sequence. If there was more than one of this sequence, the plasmid ring would have been cut into several pieces rather than just one. In order to identify the bacteria containing the foreign gene, it was crucial that this restriction process did not disable the antibiotic resistance properties as well. ECOR1 originates from E. coli and the cutting process turns the plasmid DNA ring into a structure with sticky ends. Cohen used ECOR1 to cut another plasmid derived from E. coli that carries the resistant gene to canamycin represented as the Ka gene here. Again, this plasmid had two restriction site for ECOR1 and it was not within the Ka gene. So, the Ka gene was left intact by ECOR1. As both plasmids had been cut at the same site, they had complementary sticky ends. Electrostatic attraction forces between the two restriction sites made different fragments loosely hang together. The researchers now added the glue, that is DNA ligase to the mixture and thus produced a new larger recombinant plasmid. Finally, in a step called transformation, the recombinant DNA was transferred into a bacteria by adding calcium chloride to a solution containing E. coli bacteria. Calcium chloride is a salt that renders cell walls permeable for DNA. This artificial process found nowhere in nature enabled the new plasmid to be introduced into the bacteria. Finally, the crunch came when the bacterial solution was spread over nutrient plates containing tetracycline as well as kenamycin. As expected, most of the bacteria died, but a few survived. They were bound to contain the artificially created plasmid, conferring dual resistance to both the antibiotics. Why? Because these bacteria were able to produce enzymes that inactivated both canamycin as well as tetracycline. The surviving bacteria proliferated to form cell colonies of about 100 million identical offsprings, all carrying the new recombinant DNA plasmid. A clone had been formed, a group of genetically identical organisms. The Eureka moment in genetic engineering. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Byju's the learning app today.